So good morning and then uh, welcome all of you to this uh, training program on uh, fusion uh, procurement implementation. I'm Nana here and then uh, uh, I can be contacted at any point of time whenever you have any doubts on this training at uh, nana.app60 at uh, gmail.com. Fine, I'll be the facilitator for this training and then uh, this training will be conducted based upon my practical experience on this procurement. Fine, we have implemented it for one of the clients in uh, Kuwait, is a FMCG company. And so what happens uh, with that, we'll be doing it now. <clears throat> So let me go and then share my screen and then start to explain about what exactly is this fusion procurement is all about. So let me go there and then share my screen. <clears throat> so here, <clears throat> uh, now the first one is what we have to log into the system now. So I now go there and then log in there too. So just like in R2, what happens is we also have the login screen here. So it will be having a username and password. It will be having a username and password. So I'll be providing you the credentials to you once when I start the training. Fine. So you'll be able to see each and everything over here now. Thank you for signing. So I'm signing in. <clears throat> so once when you sign in, what happens you'll be having one such screen here fine. once a screen here so this is the main home page over here now fine i will now click on the home home icon on the top so the moment you come to the home icon of the top what happens it will be taking you to a thing called springboard this is known as a springboard in which what happens you'll be having plenty of things over here so these are all equivalent to menus now like partner management is a menu sales is a menu likewise each and everything is a menu fine and then let's say i click on the product management I will now click on the product management. Here, what happens? It has got a lot of sub menus. Now. Fine. So it may be a sub menu or a function, basically. It may be a sub menu or a function. So you have got plenty of sub menus. Now. And then this screen can be customized to your requirement, actually. Fine. Every user can customize it. Say, for example, in the product management, I don't want ideas to be over there. Now. So I can remove the ideas over here. I'll tell you about how to do that now. I will now click on this page on the right hand side. What happens? A personalized springboard icon is there. When I click on it, what happens? It will be opening up. So below the product management, you have to go to the product management area. So go down. So you have got partner management and then you have got the product management here. Simply remove that idea and then click on OK. Fine. You can even remove the entire menu itself. Fine. Like what happened, the product management itself can be removed or the sub menus can be removed. Fine. Click on OK. So by which what happens? The idea is go, went and gone. Way butch, gone. So you click on the product management. What happens? You know, see the idea is not there. Now I will now show you a customized screen of our incline now. Fine. Here what happens is there are so many things that are visible now. Fine. I will now show you a customized screen of our incline now. <clears throat> so this is a customer now. So the customer is logging in with this now. Fine. Once when he logs in, you can now see. <clears throat> so you are recording this session? Yeah, yeah. The record session is getting recorded now. Fine. Okay, okay. Thank you. The session is getting. Are you able to see the recording icon there in your screens? Anjan? Anand, are you able to see the recording icon there on your screen? Yeah, yeah, we are able to see Anand. Yeah, that, yeah, that recording icon. If that uh, icon goes away, please tell me because by mistake, if I click something else, if the icon stops, you immediately inform me that what happened, the recording is not going on, I will again start the recording. Okay, okay, okay. yeah, top left. I can see. Top left, yeah. you'll be able to see the recording. Now, this is a customer screen now. Fine, if you click on the home page, what happens? He wants only whatever is relevant to be displayed for him. So what happens, he works only on these things. So this has been customized. And then this, he himself can customize it. Fine, not necessarily a technical guy has to come and then customize it. So he can even click on the springboard and then customize it. A springboard is nothing but a collection of menus, submenus, and functions. Fine, menus, submenus, and function. So all these things are coming up over here. Apart from that, what happens, we have a navigator like what we have in eBus now. Fine, apart from that. So you click on the left-hand side, there is an icon, navigator icon on the left-hand side top. You can see if you click on it. What happens against each and everything? Fine. For example, the product management has got four such sub menus. The costing has got different sub menus. The warehouse has got this many sub menus. Procurement, like this, what happens? It will also show that. So, if you click on any of the sub menus or functions, what happens? It will be taking you to the directly the transactional screen. <clears throat> Fine. So, what happens? I will now say click on the cost accounting. In the costing, I will now click on the cost accounting. If I go there and have a look at it. Who is the new in joining now? <clears throat> Uh, Mahesha Kumar, okay, man, yeah, his uh, mic is yet to come now. 
Mahesh, as soon as uh, the mic comes in, you can uh, speak to me now. Anybody who has got any doubt at any point, time, please uh, speak to me at any point. So once when I click on the costing, what happens? We are now come to the transactional screen of the costing. This is the transactional screen of costing. We'll be explaining it a greater one when we do the actual ones now. <clears throat> I remember it's a huge module, and then I expect a minimum of five days, and then depending upon the interaction, it may even go for the sixth day or even seventh day also. Right? So Saturdays and Sundays, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And so uh, you will not be able to what happens uh, register everything on your mind. That is the reason what happens. I'm going to provide you the recording also, plus with the uh, request that what happens. You keep the recording on YouTube because sir, we can't hear you. Oh God, uh, Anjan, can you hear me? Uh, there is some yeah, problem. Hear you. Uh, I think I I can't hear anyone's voice. Uh, is it because? No, no, I'm able to hear you. Stopped. Yeah, yeah, I should. Yeah, uh, Aish. I will not call you as Aish. No. Fine, Aish. Uh, others are able to hear me, but only you are able to not hear me. <clears throat> what about Anjan and Anand? You are able to hear me, na? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, I'm able to hear you. Uh, initially, also, what happened? You had a problem with your speaker. Uh, towards only your speaker came up. Fine, Aish. Just have a look at it again. <clears throat> Can you hear me now? <clears throat> Mm. Can you hear okay. me? Yes, sir. Now it is fine. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm. <clears throat> now, I have come to the costing transactional screen. So, this is basically a function. So, if you click on any of them, fine. If you click on any of them, uh, what happens when you, when you click on the navigator one? Fine. If you click on the navigator, so you will be having menus, sub menus, fine, warehouse operations. Fine. If I go to the warehouse operations and then I go to the inventory, fine. I go to the warehouse operations and I go to the inventory. So I go on, you can now see what happens. The inventory area will now come in here. Here it's a sort of a sub menu now. Fine. Whatever you're going to see is a sub menu. And then with one uh, menu being shown over here, it is now showing you the organization now. Fine. I'll drop down and then I'll choose the organization now. So let me choose another organization and then click on OK now. So the moment I choose the organization, what happens? The organization's basic function will be shown over here, like manage item quantities is not shown over here. And then we can go to other functions by clicking on this task carousel. Fine. On the right hand side, you have got a task carousel. If you click on the task carousel, what happens? It will show you a lot of icons over here now. You can choose one of the one of the functions and then you can go over there. So what happens? This sub menu of inventory has got one function uh, defaultly displayed over here. And then we can go to other functions on clicking on the task carousel and then choose the appropriate task, create miscellaneous transactions, subject task, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever you want, you can go there and see. So this is how it works now. So upon logging in, what happens once when you're logging in, and then if you click on the home icon, if you click on the home icon, what happens? You can now see what happens. A lot of menus are available over here now. And this is called a spring boat. This springboard can be customized by the right-click icon and can do it. And then similarly, the navigator, if you want to customize it, you need some amount of technical knowledge. Fine. You click on the navigator. So the springboard need not necessarily be equal to the navigator also. Fine. In the navigator, uh, what happens against the product management, you can have four submenus, whereas in this place, we can even have three submenus. If you click on the product management, you can even have three. So depending upon the requirement, we can do it. But navigator customization needs some extra technical already, whereas springboard customization, the end user himself can do it. So it is equivalent to what? The menus, submenus, and functions of R12. The menus, submenus, and functions of R12. Go <clears> there, you us. And now we will now have an idea about what exactly it is. Fine. Before which, what happens? Uh, we have customized this person's requirement now. And he actually is a purchase officer. So if you click on the SCM reports on this now, fine. If you click on the SCM reports, he wanted the purchase orders to be in a specific format now. So if you click on the SCM reports, it will be showing you. I will not go to the PO reports. There are so many things are there. All of them are basically functions actually. So it may be some menu or function. If you click on it, what happens again? What happens? It will be going to the next report making page. Here, one of our, he wanted to take a report based upon the PO number now. He'll go there. We'll now choose one of the PO's now. And then click on after. 
So this is how the report will be coming up. Fine, the purchase order number. This is the company which is there in white. And then what happens? They want the purchase order number on the top, then the date, and then his name. In fact, my consultant has now put his name basically. And then what happens is the purchase officer's phone numbers and then the payment terms has to come in the top. And then in the bottom, what happens? The line level information of item description, etc. He wanted it in this format. And then he wanted us to put the amount in words now. Fine. Our technical team has configured the entire thing. And then it is not done it. And then what happens? They may even have some notes to the supplier as well as note to the receiver. Fine. Uh, that we have in artwork. Similarly, here also we have it, and then they will also be displayed over here. And then the delivery location as well as the locations are also shown over here. <laughs> so, and then and they want to have a, a legal disclaimer at the bottom. Fine. So, the disclaimer is coming at the bottom. So, as per his requirement, what happened? The PO has been formatted. <clears throat> and then this will be growing as an attachment to the what's called your customer, your uh, supplier actually. Fine. So, such things can be done with the technical team. Technical team will now configure whatever you want. Apart from that, in uh, Fusion, what happens? Uh, you have one uh, uh, one more future called uh, what happens? Uh, OTBA, Oracle Transactional Business Intelligence, through which what happens? You yourself can configure all these things, now, but not to this extent. Right? And that uh, this configuration cannot be done by a functional consultant. We need the help of people because what happens? Uh, we have to format the page. Basically. Apart from that, if you want to have a simple uh, thing like what happens? A PO summary report. I'm going to show you. This you yourself can do. So you can even put, a, they wanted a various search criteria like this now. Find here what happens uh, based upon these search criteria so from day to day, supply name, the BU, the business unit, the purchase order numbers. What happens? It will give you the list of POs and then these are the columns they want now. If they want such a simple report, you also can do it. Find and then give it the incline. <coughs> then they want the, the bottom a summation basically. The summation has to be done. The grand total process. So these are all some simple reports which are going to be in a sort of an Excel sort of a format now. So that can be configured by you uh, with the, the from day to day and then the header from this one. Uh, you will not be able to do this, uh, what happens uh, your uh, logo and other things, you cannot do it. But what happens, simple reports can be done. With you. So the Oracle Transactional Business Intelligence will now provide you certain stuff that what happens, you can even give you ready-made immediately, whatever you want the customers. So this is on uh, what's called. A small intro into how to log in and then how to see the springboard, the navigators, as well as the functions. Now, show you something else. Now we'll now see about how uh, it's uh, what's called. You can know how about it. Show you the enterprise structure actually. So in uh, e tool in uh, ebiz art well, what happens? Uh, we have a business group in the top. So here, what happens, this is known as an enterprise at the top. And in EBIS, what happens, we can have any number of business groups over there. We can have any number of business groups over there. Oh, one second, one day is join. Uh, Mahesh, can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, my, Mahesh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I'm able to hear you. My Lord. <clears throat> so here, what happens, we'll be having one business group in the top, one second. So we have a business, you have got an enterprise in the top now. <clears throat> so this is equivalent to the business group of r actually. <clears throat> Can you join the meeting? Uh, some four or five people. Are... Okay. Pane or LR data is on the Okay. okay. Okay, so here what happens, uh, we can have only one enterprise in the top, whereas in EBIS, what happens, we can have n number of business groups on one instance. So we can have only one enterprise in the top. So below which what happens, uh, they have introduced a new concept called division. Divisions and subdivisions are new to uh, what happens here, fusion actually. It is not there in uh, uh, EBIS basically. So these are all physical entities which have been introduced in fusion. We can have any divisions, you can have any number of subdivisions below it. So below which what happens, we have the ledger legal entity combination. Fine, this is almost equivalent to, is equal to what we have in uh, uh, EBIS, but with enhancements. Fine, the ledger legal entity combination has got some enhancements, which will be understanding in a financial training actually. Below which what happens in EBIS, we have an operating unit. The operating unit is replaced by a business unit. The operating unit operates on five modules. Fine, POAP, OMAR, and then cash management. 
here what happens uh, the business unit is responsible for hr also hr sales etc etc some more extra functionalities have been provided for the bu so bu is uh, much more powerful than an operating unit so the operating unit is replaced by a business unit so the business unit is the one which is going to perform transactions so in a in a ebis what happens if you see in a ebis you will be having the what's called i will not see you have any global infrastructure in there I will not show you a global infrastructure for EBS. <clears throat> so here, if you see, we'll be having a business group at the top, the ledger and legal entity, and then afterwards an operating unit, the master org and child org. Here, what happens? The heart of a structure is an operating unit, fine, where all the operations take place. Fine, all the operations take place. The heart of a structure in a EBS is operating unit, whereas in Fusion, the heart of a structure is a legal entity. The legal entity is the heart. Fine, it is going to house all the data. The legal entity has got a lesser importance in R12. In R12, it is not having much of importance, except for certain functionalities, which uh, what happens here, HR will do it. Fine. Here, what happens, the legal entity, the heart of a structure, the operating unit is replaced by a business unit, and then what happens, the business unit will be basically serving the legal entity. It provides, it is a service provider. It provides a service to the legal entity, actually. It is now responsible for all the transactions. In the legal entity, what happens? All the five transactions, the asset transactions, liability transactions, your income, expenditure, and bonus fund transactions, all the five transactions are taking place only at the LE level. Fine, LE is the owner of a company, actually. And then it takes everything. And then these transactions are facilitated by a business unit in Fusion. <clears throat> if you have any doubt at any point in time, just ask me then in the answer. Thank you. So the operating unit is replaced by business unit. Business unit is more powerful than an operating unit of e-business basically. And then the legal entity is the heart of a structure. In R12, what happens is we can have the business unit as a HLR or the legal entity as a HLR or an operating unit as a HLR. So HR can be classified, you can classify any of the three entities, the business group or the legal entity or an operating unit as a HR organization. Here it is not possible. The legal entity is the only HR organization. In Fusion, what happens is we can create employees only at the daily level, no other level. Whereas in uh, VBIS, what happens, we can create employees at the corporate level, at the top level, as well as what happens at the every daily level or at the every operating unit level also, if you want. In. Nowadays, it's now becoming global now. Fine. Many of the people are now creating all the employees only at the business group only on the UVN artwork. But here, what happens, business group or the enterprise has got nothing to do. And here, what happens, it has got certain things and then, uh, that we'll be seeing it while uh, we do it now when we are uh, going and then co configuring our structure. Actually, This is known as an enterprise structure in Fusion now. But legal entity is the ultimate one in which what happens, all the transactions are kept over here. <clears throat> so we have this. The item master org and then the child org concept is exactly the same like what we have in EBIS basically. Fine. So we have a master org and then you'll have a child org. So all of them, both of them are reporting parallel to the business unit over here. <clears throat> so the concept is the same. Fine. So here, one extra addition to the entity is what divisions now. Below the, the enterprise, below the enterprise, we have divisions over here now. So there is one extra addition. Apart from that, what happened? The structure almost remains the same. <clears throat> we don't have much of a change as such. And then it has got enhancements at each and every level. Now. Fine, every level has got a lot of enhancements now. Fine, especially procurement has got uh, the thing which I worked upon has got uh, plenty of enhancements. I know, about, I don't know about others now. Fine, maybe everything will be having a lot of enhancements when compared to even. It has been made simple as such. That is the biggest advantage. Fine, configuring the things are uh, basically simple. <clears throat> So this is how the structure is now. So inventory also also will be having a distribution center. We'll be having a warehouse, and then what happens? The warehouse management system is now going to come up in release 13 now. Fine, it is now going to come up, and then uh, the manufacturing has already come in release 11 itself. Now we are in release 12 actually. Fine, each and every modules are now gradually coming up. <clears throat> so this is how what happens? The structure has been configured over here. So. In the BU, what happens? It uh, it facilitates transaction on the LE now. Fine. The BU is the one. That is why what happens? Uh, they have put it as an embedded one over here now. Fine. Now it'll be coming. And then how to configure BU? What happens? This will be seeing it while we conduct the training. Actually, Fine. there are multiple business models. Basically, we'll be doing. We'll be having a discussion about it once when you come into that level. <sighs> and then uh, this is how the Oracle Fusion applications looks like. Now. It has got seven pillars actually. Fine. One is a financial management is a pillar. It's a product family. HCM is one product family. SCM is one product family. And then what happens? Your fusion projects is one product family. Fusion procurement is one. And then CRM is one. And then 
the governance, the risk, and compliance is another one. These are the seven product pillars. Out of which, what happens in the fusion procurement? I have worked on purchasing only. So the training will be on purchasing. The self service procurement, sourcing, procurement contract, supply portal, supply qualification. I am not still I am in the learning stage. I am not in. I am not proficient enough to conduct any training on this topic. Even though I know something on those things, but what happens once when I uh, uh, practice them? What happens? I will be conducting training on other other pillars of the fusion procurement also. So it has basically got six pillars now. Basically, <clears throat> similarly, SCM has got six pillars: the product management, asset management, GOP, and then the DOO, cost management, and logistics are coming up again. <clears throat> So likewise, what happens? Uh, it has got seven such pillars. No, no. Where does this uh, order management come? Order management is in a DOO actually. DOO is uh, basically distributed order orchestration, which what happens? Order management is also part of it actually. So it's uh, fixing, fitting up at the place. <laughs> And then uh, this is how uh, the data flows basically. Fine. We'll be having a HCM, financial supply chain management, and customer management. So they may be passing on the information to the procurement or the six pillars now. And then uh, they also in turn will be passing on the data to the project management, financials, as well as supply chain management. Also. And the cost management, product management, order management, the receiving area. Fine. This is how the data flows. Fine. How the data flows into various systems of this. <coughs> the model has been beautifully designed actually. Fine. Uh, what uh, they have done is uh, a team from uh, Infosys as well as Oracle has been formed some uh, 10 years back. And then uh, what happened? That team was responsible for developing it. So they brought in the futures of uh, the broader products like uh, uh, PeopleSoft, JD Edwards, etc. Et and then what happens? Uh, they have amalgamated it into a thing called a fusion engine. And then uh, they have identified the plus points of each and every uh, every module's future, and then uh, they brought in over here now. For example, JD Edwards is good in manufacturing, so manufacturing futures have been brought in over there. PeopleSoft is uh, good for uh, what happens, HRMS, and then HRMS has got a lot of uh, activities from uh, PeopleSoft. And similarly, what happens, uh, they have seen in SAP also what are the good features, and then they also brought those things over here now. Fine. So this amalgamated uh, uh, fusion has uh, got uh, what happens, uh, plenty of uh, attractive things. And then uh, it is yet to develop the what's called the market actually because what happens uh, every future was uh, they were unable to give and so what happens uh, people even uh, go for hardware actually now what happens this release 12 uh, in place and then uh, release 13 is going to be done in about a month's time so with release 13 what happens it will be uh, what's called a solid one and the sales team will be able to sell it up in a greater extent actually <clears throat> So there are the various business models of uh, uh, what happens at uh, BU actually to be having a look at it a bit later. They have done a lot of uh, uh, things on this now. Fine. For example, if you go there and then see the EBIS now, fine to go there. Go to inventory. If you go and then see the organization parameters, set up organization parameters. <clears throat> so if you go and then have a look at it. So if you go there in the last tab, you'll fine, you'll be having other accounts. Now, tell me what the supply chain man <coughs> has to do with the purchase price variance account, IPV account, <coughs> accrual account, etc. etc. He has got nothing to do essentially. And so, what happens? Is they have decided that accounting information need not be there on the organization parameters at all. So, they have shifted the entire accounting to financials. So, supply chain will only have this now. And if you go there, they will be having these parameters. In the costing, what happens? It is again irrelevant information for them, for the supply chain man. All the accounts have been shipped over here. The entire costing itself has been shipped over here. Fine. Costing is now shipped as a separate module. And so what happens? All the information, the costing will be going to costing model. Revision lot serial numbers is required now. Fine. Revision lot serial numbers is required. <clears throat> uh, who is this LS5018? I am waiting for the chapter next person to come up and join actually. I think he's going to. So, <clears throat> so here, what happens? The revision lot, everything has been kept over here. Now, fine. ATF pickup. This is uh, basically for order management. Has been pushed over to order management. And so, what happens? We'll be having the inventory parameters over here. The revision lot serial numbers will be there. And then, if you go there, we'll be having what happens? The AT, ATP pickups, item sourcing. What happens? There are some informations which are available here in this place. And that's it. Fine. The organization parameters will not be having. The intro information is not required at all because, as far as the costing is concerned. What happens? Everything has been accounting has all been pushed into financials. No accounting is available on the organization parameters. So very nicely done. So they thought that what happens? Uh, there is no meaning in having it. <clears throat> 
and then if you go into purchasing fine here what happens you got six purchase orders now fine double click sorry <clears throat> it go to the purchase orders what happens you will be having four purchase orders and then two releases now fine so totally six purchase orders are there fine. they found that this is all unnecessary and then they have reduced it to three only so in fusion we have got three purchase orders only but all the functionalities have been maintained or enhanced in fusion the entire functionality has been maintained or enhanced in fusion we don't have any problem as such problem as such somebody is uh, mike is uh, echoing is uh, do not use the laptop speakers on mic use a headset otherwise because if you use the laptop speakers and mic sometimes the audio will be echoing <clears throat> Uh, hello, LS five zero one eight. Who is that? Is it from uh, Chapter Next? Are you from Chapter Next? Okay, he is not able to hear me. I think probably because I was told that one day will be joining in Chapter Next. Actually, <clears throat> okay, fine. Yeah. So here, what happens? The six purchase orders have been reduced to four, three only. Fine. So that has been done, and then uh, there are a lot of announcements when compared to eBay. It has been made simple. So setting up the purchasing is uh, relatively simple when compared to what happens R twelve. No? In R twelve, uh, uh, you might have understood that what happens we have to set the approval groups, approval assignments, document type, and then uh, various other uh, uh, approval setups and other things. Fine. We have the AME. AME is now inbuilt in uh, Fusion now. Fine. AME is now part of uh, uh, purchasing now, and there is no separate setup required now. It comes as a inbuilt one. And then uh, setting up AME is so simple in Fusion. And then uh, we have done uh, for some of the customers basically. And then uh, it has been done nicely. <coughs> so this is on the procurement front actually. And then what happens? Uh, they have now done away with the responsibility concept. There is no responsibility at all in Fusion. So your responsibility is nothing but a collection of functions and sub functions as far as R twelve is concerned. Here, what happens? It is role based access control. So we don't have any such functionality yet. Fine, everything is role based now. Fine. Everything is role based. So if a person has got a role, then only what happens? He will be having these icons. For example, a cashier. He has to collect cash and then he has to disburse cash. And then he has to take a report. Yeah, only three functions he'll do it. So those three functions as a role will be attached to him. And then uh, those roles only will be visible. The RBAC is available in R12. The role-based access control is available in R12. But what happens? It is not used to a great extent actually. Fine. It is only used to a smaller extent uh, in uh, what's called your uh, this thing. And uh, what happens is that. Uh, uh, this is now a full-fledged one in uh, what's called your what's called infusion. Fine. Everything is role-based access. In fact, what happens? Uh, doing it is uh, very simple actually. So in this training, what we are going to do, I will now show you. There is one procurement worksheet is there. Fine. Uh, so all of you, please uh, put your email ID on your uh, chat box on the on the chat. Fine. So I will pick it up and then I will now send up. Uh, uh, what happens today's session because I'm not finding uh, the chapter next man coming over here. Now, fine, he will be normally collecting everything and then he'll be coordinating with you. But uh, what happens? Uh, there is a power short power cut in Tinagar. So, what happens? Uh, their office is not totally down. So, uh, what you do is you uh, put your email ID on the chat box so that what happens uh, today's recorded session I'll be sending it to you so that you can have a look at it now. <clears throat> All of you, please put your email IDs and then I will now <coughs> do that. I will now. Uh, uh, as soon as the recording is complete, I will be sending it to you. <coughs> you might have directly registered with the chat next. I'm not sure about it, but even then, um, so is it, what happens? You can now put your email so that what happens? I'll be sending the today's recording session. So, this training, I will not tell you about how exactly it is going to begin now in the procurement worksheet if you go there. So, what happens? This is what we are going to do. So, these are the implementation steps now. So we will be first of all having a look at the enterprise configuration, and then afterwards, what happens? Here? I will now I will now create an implementation user. I will now give a roles for him now, and then I will now go to the enterprise. Then afterwards, a location creation. Then afterwards, we will now do the financial setups of legal jurisdiction, legal authorities, legal interest, and legality. 
fine. This is the four financial setups which will be doing it. And then afterwards, what happens? We will know, <coughs> come back and then we will know, create the chart of accounts. So for this training, what happens? I am now going to create three segmental chart of accounts. One is a company, one is a department, one is an account. Fine. We will not restrict it to three only. <coughs> so please follow exactly as I am doing it. Uh, so that what happens? Uh, you will, initially, you will not be having much of a problem. And then once when you are conversant, what happens? You can even add more segments to your chart of accounts and then uh, create your own. Fine. In the practice session, just exactly follow because it is a huge one. And so what happens? You will not be able to, what happens exactly, uh, do it as such. Not fine. Okay, exactly for it. Then what happens? We will be doing the managed accounting calendars. Here, what happens? We will be, after doing it, we will now create our ledger actually. Fine. So the primary ledger has got four C's actually. It is exactly like EBIS. The ledger will be having a chart of accounts, calendar, currency, and then conversion. Fine. So with which, what happens? We will now complete the ledger creation. And then afterwards, we will now create the legal entity actually. <clears throat> we will now create the legal entity. And then associate the ledger and legal entity over here. Fine. Assign the legal entities to the journal. The legal entities are already created there. That will be done. And then with the fifth step number 25, what happens? The minimal financial setups will be completed. Will be completed the minimal financial setups. And then afterwards, we will not come to the business units. And then uh, the 25, 26, 27, and then 28 uh, or 30, <clears throat> up to 30. Fine. So 26 to 30 will be on the business units. We'll be creating the business unit. We'll be creating only one business unit for the training. And then afterwards, we'll now jump into inventory now. <coughs> So we'll go there. So from 31 to 35 is all inventory setups. So initially the financial setups, then the business unit setups, then the inventory setups, then the HRMS setups will come to it. So in the HRMS, what happens is almost similar to what we have in EBS now. The jobs, the positions, the employment, and then the hierarchy. Now here, what happens, there is one extra addition called departments now. So we'll be completing all the setups. Fine. So these things are completed. Fine. We'll be completing it. And then in the HRMS setups. Then finally, what happens? We'll assign the roles. So this uh, guy who is going to do all the one will be giving all the roles with it, right? Fine. We'll be giving all the relevant roles to this person. So that what happens uh, from this login itself will be demonstrating everything for you. Fine. It is basically a role-based access control. And so what happens? Uh, it will be done over here. It will not go there and then wait. So this completes the complete enterprise setups. The what is called uh, the enterprise setups, which includes uh, the uh, what happens your ledger, legal entity, and then the chart of accounts, the business unit, the inventory ox. Fine. Remember, we cannot create any enterprise in the top because what happens? We can have only one enterprise in the top. Fine. We cannot have multiple enterprises over there because that will be only one enterprise. So after having completed what happens, we'll now jump into purchasing setups. So on the created enterprise, what happens? We'll be doing the purchasing setups, and then uh, here this has been replaced now. This is uh, as such in uh, release uh, eleven was there in release twelve. This has been bypassed and then has been made a simple link. Categories and catalogs are really a very big headache even in EBS delivery. And then there has been simplified to a beautiful extent in uh, release twelve. Now. Release twelve has been simplified. I have not uh, modified this now. So from step number five onwards, the procurement setups will now begin. From five, <clears throat> all the setups will be coming. So we'll be completing everything. And then uh, once the setups are complete, what happens? Uh, we will now go into step number 23 for item creation. And then we'll now fail in creating a requisition. And then we'll now go ahead. In EBIS, uh, we have got uh, two types of approvals now. Fine. One is uh, what's called the position hierarchy and then one is the supervisor hierarchy. So there are two methods now. Here, there are six methods. Now. It has been enhanced to six methods. Beautiful enough. And then it, uh, in fact, uh, meets every needs. It includes the AME also, including AME. We have got six methods of approval actually. And then uh, we will be demonstrating everything. And then what happens? Uh, there are two things which are there, two automated for processes there. <coughs> <coughs> One is what happens? Your CPA SPO. This is uh, this combination is uh, the contract purchase agreement, standard purchase order is not exactly. What happens used by the people in EBS basically? It has been identified and then it has been made usable in Fusion actually with the PR CPA SPO combination. So the BPA BR, which is used as an automation tool in EBS, has been exactly maintained in Fusion also. Fine, there is no change at all. Fine, we'll be seeing those things. Fine. So there are two ways of automating the PO. One is what CPA SPO combination, the standard what happens here. Contract purchase agreement, standard purchase order, and the blanket purchase agreement, BR. Right. So this has been enhanced. This has been enhanced. <coughs> Whereas the BPA, BR combination has been exactly maintained as a strong. Then afterwards, we have the receipts. Receipting, receiving is almost similar to what we have in EBS now. Fine. The direct standard and special receipt is there. The corrections, the suppliers. The substitute, unordered receipts. Fine. 
here there. We have an express and cascade results in EBS. It is yet to come. It is now coming. Fine, not yet come over here now. And then the remaining are almost same now. Then afterwards, what happens? You're going to push it into payables now. Fine, pushing into payables is also exactly similar. And then what happens? It has been simplified in payables actually. In payables, they have simplified it. <coughs> so the two-way, three-way, four-way match as well as the PO match and then there is a match. Fine. The approval match of two-way, three-way, PO, three-way, two-way, three-way, four-way, four 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 and then afterwards, what happens? The PO result match has been simplified. Somebody's uh, this thing is no problem. Hello, CMD Zubair. I will mute all now. I have muted all. Fine. If anybody wants to speak, you can open up your mic and speak. Somebody's mic is giving a, a noise now. Hello, uh, CMD, can you hear me? Hello? <clears throat> Hi. I'm able to see your face basically. CMD, can you speak a few words now? Uh, let me open up your mic now. Uh, hi, uh, your mic is giving a noise. I think you can even put a message in the chat. Fine, please uh, mention your email ID on the chat now. Fine, so that what happens? The today's uh, session recordings I'll be sending it to you. <clears throat> okay, let me again mute all the participants. <clears throat> so, whenever you want, you can open up your mic and then speak now. Now, what happens? Uh, the debit memo on RTS as well as the ERS, the ERS functionality has been kept over here as it's now. The evaluated receipt settlement is exactly the same. Then afterwards, what happens? We'll now have a look at the costing. We have done the average costing for our client. We'll be demonstrating it to you completely how to set up the costing as well as do this now. Fine. So these two things will be done. And then afterwards, what happens? Uh, here, what happens? Uh, the data migration is normally done by the technical team. Object. So technical team will be doing this. Now. Here it is not so. Technical is no more involved. Here, what happens? The technical will be having a minimal role till release 11. They cannot access any of the what happens, database tables for modification. They can only use it for view. All the database tables can be viewed only by the technical team, but they cannot be modified. So what happens is the customizations as well as what happens is making a change on the database tables is not possible by technical team. <coughs> we have a toad utility in R12, with which what happens is the people used to modify everything in the database. Here, since it is a cloud, what happens is Oracle has got the control of all the uh, technical functionalities and so what happens, our technical team is used only for report picking actually. Fine. But from release 12, what happens, they are bringing in an on premise version of R12, rather release 12. <coughs> Through which what happens, if it is an on premise version, you can have the full control now. And further what happens, so many things have been relaxed and then now technical has got some access to some, some database tables and they can modify it now. So it is now gradually getting relaxed now in uh, from release 12, 12 onwards. The release 12 is now 13 is going to come up. So, this is how the training will be, and then uh, it is approximately for approximately five to six days now, full days. And then, uh, during this training, what happens whenever you have any doubt, you can then and then you ask me, otherwise, what happens? I will not be in a position to what happens answer all your questions uh, uh, at a late time, basically. You will also be forgetting it now, and so what happens? You have to do it now. <laughs> So somebody has joined through a mobile, I think, probably. So this, how this, this, this is a really excellent one, and then you will know definitely appreciate when compared to R12, what happens? So many functionalities have been enhanced, and then uh, uh, this is really good. In fact, one of my, some of my students are saying that what happens? Uh, we will never go back to R12 at all, sir. We will only stick to only fusion only. <laughs> now onwards, they are all concentrating on all the fusion modules now, learning one by one everything. And then uh, this is really uh, good, in fact, when uh, the look and feel as well as what happens, uh, the way in which you're going to negotiate everything, what happens at the end. Okay, so this is uh, just an introduce, introduction now. Fine. Yeah, CMD, can you put a, what's called your mail ID over there now? Please put your mail ID. So that what happens, I will take a copy of it and then I will now do it now. Fine. Anand has put it now. I swear you are I has put. Anjan, can you put your mail ID over there? Anjan has also put it. And then uh, you can also put your mail ID over there now. <clears throat> put your mail ID over there. So that what I was there. today's session, I will be forwarding it to you. <coughs> so any questions on this intro now? It will be huge, and so what happens? Uh, the two-day session uh, has to be practiced on the remaining five days. So that what happens? The next uh, next time when I come, 
you will be ready with all the uh, lab exercises so that uh, <coughs> you will not have any what's called problem and then uh, if you in the meantime what happens whenever you have any problem you can write to me or otherwise what happens uh, i will now give you a skype id also this oops, dot no, no i have put it on the this thing i want to say that i put it everywhere sir uh, uh, can you hear me yeah tell me who is this yeah, sir, one question i am ishwarappa so i have one question like how difficult it is to upgrade from uh, uh, evs r12 to fusion impossible like, uh, so we huh? can upgrade it. both of them are on different technology that is on the what happens uh, uh, this is on the uh, it is on the odf technology oaf technology and the adf technology so the technology has changed and so what happens it has to be only re implemented you cannot upgrade it or anything like that. you have to re implement it actually. But as okay. far as what happens, the functionalities are concerned, what happens, uh, they provide an interface to this. For example, I already have uh, the EBIS module, let us say some module is there, the inventory is there. And then I have what happens in fusion procurement. Now these two things can communicate with each other with the help of DO. So the distributed order orchestration will now facilitate communication of various modules of various ERPs. Fine. It provides you the interface and then you can do it now. But what happens, mm -hmm. we cannot upgrade it from EBIS to Fusion actually. Like what happens, yeah. the R12 mm -hmm. will upgrade. But here it is not so. Here, mm -hmm. the methodology, everything is changed. And so what happens, we only have to re-implement the product. Mm -hmm. So because most of, many of the customers are already using the EBIS, right? Yeah, yeah. So they want to go for Fusion. So like there is a big challenge. So we cannot migrate the data also. Yeah. Data so migration what? is now in your hands now. Fine. It is no more the technical. Fine. The entire data migration has been given to the functional consultants and so what happens? Uh, you only have to migrate. So ah. data migration is not a big challenge as such. <coughs> so mm -hmm. <coughs> you can uh, do that now. Hi Sairam, mm -hmm. uh, can you hear me? He's a guy from Chapter Next India. Fine. Uh, uh, actually, what happens? Uh, he is the guy who will be coordinating it. Actually, what happens when Priya has to come? Uh, the, the system. What happens? Uh, uh, the power shut off is there, so he's unable to find. Uh, hi. Uh, can you hear me, Saira? CMD. I think he is on a mobile. I think probably. <clears throat> Any other doubts for anybody else? <clears throat> it's not a difficult one. It's easy. When compared to EBIS, what happens is easy. I'll be making a parallel comparison to EBIS at every stage, wherever possible. And so what happens, you'll be able to see, appreciate about how it was in EBIS, and then how it has uh, got changed in the fusion. So that type of uh, uh, what happens, comparison will be made, and then it will be shown to you. So it will be a very practical training, and then I have given you a lot of documents, basically. So today also, I'll be sending those documents to you, actually. All the documents. You can even go through at a lesser time. And then uh, whenever you have doubts, you can even uh, write to me as such. Fine. <clears throat> so, any doubts? Anand and okay. uh, yeah. uh, We will be having the sessions from uh, Saturday onwards. It will be, uh, what happens, it will be from uh, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then uh, if uh, we are lagging behind too much on any day, what happens, I'll be extending it slightly like half an hour, one hour. Uh, normally, it will be a 75-minute session followed by a 15 minutes break. And then I will be having a one-hour lunch session. Fine. This is my plan, actually. Fair enough. It's okay. Hmm. <clears throat> so if you don't have any doubts, uh, you can even note down the what's called uh, the mail ID of uh, the chapter next guy. Fine. So they will be making the payment collection and then what happened? They'll be coordinating it actually. Fine. You can just note down c.h.sairam at chapternextindia.com. So they are organizing this training actually. <clears throat> they have hired me for uh, conducting this training. I'm the facilitator for this training. So they are the organizers actually. Fine. Please note down this uh, mail ID as such. <clears throat> I think one uh, Priya is also there. I'm not sure about where exactly she is. is unable to join actually. Sairam, can you put a message that you are able to hear me? <clears throat> I don't know if he is able to hear me or not. I'm not sure about it. <clears throat> so, 
So anybody has got any other doubts? <clears throat> No, 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 from my end, uh, no, no. Okay, then yeah, fine. So we will be meeting at 10 a.m. on next Saturday, the coming Saturday actually, and then we will now start our activity. So the training will be somewhat uh, going at high speed, uh, and then uh, whenever you feel what happens, the uh, difficulty in understanding any topics, uh, then and there you stop me because my natural pace is very fast actually. Uh, <laughs> that is the problem. And then uh, uh, what happens? I tend to go up. And then uh, fortunately, what happens is everyone of you knows EBS. What happens? Uh, you won't be finding it difficult to what happens correlate these two things together. Uh, <clears throat> and then if you have any doubts, you can even write to me at uh, non under app sixty at uh, gmail dot com. Otherwise, you can even Skype me at uh, apps dot nana. And then uh, get uh, clarifications. And then uh, you invite uh, others also fine. <clears throat> You bring in more participants, you'll be happy. And there is a real happiness, which is the teacher will be heading it now. Right? <laughs> and I'm one of the best trainers as far as uh, uh, these uh, uh, SCM modules are concerned. And then uh, this is the first uh, module I'm connecting in uh, Fusion actually, whereas in EBIS, I'm a SCM, uh, uh, what happens, uh, Pista actually. <laughs> I worked in this industry for more than 20 years in the domain. And then afterwards, what happens, I started uh, teaching Oracle applications for the past 10 years actually. I took a volunteer retirement. I was an AGM in uh, one of the steel companies in uh, Andhra. And then afterwards I came back and then uh, because of some health issues, I couldn't move out actually. <coughs> now I'm now conducting this training. So thanks all for joining this. And then uh, what happens, uh, let us hope that I will not make a big uh, thing, big show this now. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kana. Thank you, fine. I'm now stopping the recording. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah.